Previously on P-Dubs Arcade Loft, link is in the video description below, we did a video and we showed you how to get the Team Encoder Mystery Countercade Hack set up on a USB flash drive in order to bring your own games and play those on the Arcade 1UP Marvel Countercades. We of course were doing this to our Marvel Super Heroes cabinet, but there were a couple of things missing from this mod, such as the ability to map all six buttons for Player 1 and Player 2, as well as we didn't have box art, as well as we didn't have video snaps for the user interface when selecting your games. And in today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through how we can get all three of those things added to make this a much better modding experience for you. And we're gonna do it right now. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is fix our controls. We wanna have six button controller mapping on both player one and player two. You're gonna need this file, this Dashine 2JS file. I'll have a link for this in the video description below for you to download it. It's only a couple of kilobytes. You're gonna navigate over to your USB drive, make sure it's plugged into your PC, and you're gonna open up the folder that says user data. When you open up this folder, you'll see that Dashine file already exists on the USB drive. Again, if you follow the steps in the previous video, this video assumes you did those steps already. You're gonna grab that file that you just downloaded and you're gonna drop it into the same folder and make sure you click on replace the file. That's gonna replace the file and it's gonna give us the ability to now map six buttons on both sides and let me show you how we're gonna get that done. So for instance, go ahead and if you want to do this now, you can or you could do it later. You're gonna hit the start button the next time you plug this into your counter gate and you're gonna navigate over to the controller settings in order to do the controller inputs. You're gonna hold down one of the buttons for player one on the player one side, cause we're gonna map player one side first. And of course you're gonna map up, down, left, right. For the start button, you're gonna hit start. Now for your hotkey, this is where it gets interesting. That updated file gives us the ability to now use the player two start button as a hotkey for player one. So we'll be able to use that for select as well as for hotkey. You could then take your buttons, make sure you map A, B, X, Y, wherever you like. You could go ahead and map L and R, L1 and R1 as well. And then just hold down a button to skip all the other buttons that we're not gonna use or don't have available. And when you get down to hotkey, boom, you could go ahead and press the player two hotkey. And now we have the ability to play six button games on the player one side. And before we exit this interface, we wanna now map player two. So we're gonna hit the A button, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna map another in in controller? We say yes. Hold down one of the buttons on the player two side and you're gonna do the same thing, up, down, left, right. Player two start is gonna work as its own hotkey, but when it comes to the select or hotkey button, or you could call it your coin button, you're not going to assign that on player two. You're just gonna hold down a button and skip over it. You can then map your six buttons, A, B, X, Y, L1, R1, and then hold down your buttons to skip past the rest of the stuff we're not gonna use, as well as the hotkey. Now, when you hit the okay button here, it's gonna tell you, hey, you forgot to assign a hotkey. Go ahead and just uh, navigate over and skip it. And with this setup, we now have six buttons available to use for both player one and two on this countercade, plus the player two button is gonna be our coin button. So we just have to insert one coin with the player two start button and then hit player one start to start a one player game. And also you hit the player two start button to insert multiple coins in order to start a two player game on the countercade. So you'll be able to get both sides up and running with all six buttons working. And it's really, really cool, especially if you wanna play fighting games that are gonna require six buttons. And now with this setup, whenever you're inside of a game, you could just press the player one start and the player two start buttons at the same time to exit the game and get back to the main menu. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is add box art as well as video snaps to our Batacera build for the games that we put on that flash drive. Big shout out to community member Don Lemmy for putting together this awesome artwork file. I'll have a link to this in the video description below. You're gonna have to download it off Mega. Usually I think Mega costs money. You might wanna just sign up for the free temporary account if you've never used them before. It is a 21 gigabyte file. Once it downloads using 7-Zip, just go ahead and extract it uh, like we've done previously in the previous video and extract all the files to the same folder that we downloaded it from and let it go. 
Okay, after about 10 minutes, once it finishes extracting all of the artwork files, go ahead and plug in your flash drive that's got your Batacera build on it into your PC. You're going to open up the files that you downloaded off of Mega, and you'll see here you've got artwork for various systems, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Mamas Arcade, etc. Go on your flash drive and go to user data, open that folder, then find the ROMs folder, and open that folder, and you're going to navigate to the corresponding folder or system. In this case, it's Super Nintendo. You'll notice previously I had put just a few Super Nintendo games on my build in order to get this thing tested. There's a few Super Nintendo ROMs. Your folders might be empty if you've never set this up before. We're going to open up the Super Nintendo folder. We're going to select the entire package, every single thing that's on the build uh, artwork package that we just downloaded and we're gonna just drop it onto that uh, same Super Nintendo folder. You'll notice some of the folders have duplicate names, so as it goes through the process of transferring, it will ask you, what do you wanna do with files with duplicate names? Well, you wanna click on the button that says replace the files in the destination, because you want all the new files on this artwork package to replace everything on this thumb drive. That way, the next time you plug your flash drive into your countercade and fire it up, you'll see that all of your ROMs that you added to this countercade, to this Batacera build, they will have matching um, box art, as well as if you hover over the game, it'll start playing video snaps. So the background menu music will kind of uh, lower itself and you'll hear the game music and see little tests, test videos for each game. Now, if you for some reason have a ROM that doesn't have a matching name to the artwork package. Like for instance, this is I think Arc Riser, Arc Riser 2, and then I got this weird version of Arc Riser. And I also have these weird like Hispanic and Asian version ROMs of Adam's Family. This is what happens when you drop 4,000 games on a system. If the, if the file names don't match the artwork names, well then it's not gonna pull the artwork with the ROM. So just a heads up there, if your ROM name does not match the same name as the artwork, it's not going to pull that uh, particular video snap. It's not going to pull the um, it's not going to pull the box art or anything like that. You'll just have a gray box with the name of the game. Usually this happens when you do a big ROM dump like I did, where I have like 10 versions of each game when you only need one, etc. As you can see, I got so many versions of like 19XX. So I'm just going to delete those off my USB and just keep the one that works. Usually it's just the uh, standard ones that uh, is all you need. Any ROMs that are labeled like, you know, Japanese version and all that, you probably don't need. And it's just duplicate stuff clogging up your USB. Either way, have fun tinkering and playing with it. An important thing to remember as well is that the internal hardware that you're running everything on on this PCB board that came stock with the arcade one up is no more powerful than a Raspberry Pi 3, if that. So there are some games that if you notice there's some kind of audio choppiness or gameplay lag or things like that, there's a couple things you can try such as, hey, try a different ROM of the game or try the game in one of the different emulators. So instead of MAME, try fi the Final Burn emulator, etc. You might have more success. Games like 2 on 2 here, NHL 2 on 2, this game doesn't run really good on here but hundreds of other arcade games should run without an issue. Once again, huge shout out to Team Encoder helping us figure out the workarounds on getting the six button control set up for both player one and player two. Hopefully you guys are excited about that. Huge thanks again to Don Lamy for putting together the artwork package for everybody. And I'll be back again with probably another video showing you how you can change the themes and customize your builds even further. So if you're interested in that content, don't forget to give us a thumbs up on the way out and thank you for subscribing.